Have you ever been surfing the internet, checking out the latest apology on Instagram, or SEC violation on Twitter, or flawless new live action travel competition channel on YouTube that could really use some more subscribers, and you find yourself thinking, gee, the internet's great, but there's only one of it. I wish there was an alternate version of the internet, and I wish it was French and it was started in 1978 and it was called Minitel. Well then, boy do I have good news for you. In 1978, France created an alternate version of the internet, and it was called Minitel. It all started when two nerds wrote a nerd paper called The Computerization of Society, except really it was called L'Informatisation de la Société because these nerds, it just so happened, were French. The report was presented to French President Valéry Giscard d'Estaing on one of his rare breaks from the traditional French president duties of having affairs while balding, and it basically said that telecommunications would soon be transformed by a strange and mystical device called a computer, and that if France could get ahead of the trend, they could go from having what was, at the time, the worst telecommunications network in the industrialized world to having the opposite of worst one. And so, French politicians decided to do three things that politicians almost never do. Listen to experts, plan ahead, and then actually do a thing that was useful to people. And that thing was called Minitel. Basically, Minitel was a series of computer terminals with a screen and keyboard, in the Azerty configuration, that were hooked up to a public data network called Transpac, which would connect them to servers, allowing them to exchange data in the x.25 network protocol. And terminals were available free of charge to anyone in France with a phone line. That's because the whole system was designed and executed by PTT, France's state-run telecommunications network, and was essentially envisioned as an expansion pack to your phone. Instead of only typing numbers and hearing stuff, you could now type letters and see stuff. Which, though it sounds simple, was a huge deal, or as the French call it, un deal enormous. For a country so prone to overthinking that they did three consecutive revolutions, the French developed a surprisingly simple system for Minitel. Users would start by dialing a four-digit code on their phones. The code started at 3611, and any code above 3615 cost money per minute to use, and then, once connected to a server, you would enter a string of letters to indicate what service you wanted. Basically, it was like a URL, except if you wanted to read Le Monde, instead of going to www.lemonde.com, you typed 3615 Le Monde. Minitel's first service was a simple electronic phone book, but thanks to the fast-growing user base, by the early 90s, there were over 10,000 services offered on Minitel. French people were playing computer games, doing online shopping, buying plane or train tickets, and reading the news on Minitel about a decade before the World Wide Web was being used worldwidely. The most profitable services, though, were the infamous Misagery Roses, or Pink Messages. Surprisingly to the French government, but unsurprisingly to anyone with even a passing familiarity with French culture, French people looked at this extraordinary technology and asked, how can we be aggressively horny about this? And so came message rooms where men would go to chat with hot single women near them, who, according to reports, were more often than not just other dudes who were either paid by the chat service or were bartering for more Minitel connection time. Soon France was littered with billboards advertising services like 3615ULLA or 3615MAUD or 3615CUM, which before you try to get a community guideline strike on me, I'll have you know is the Latin word for with. Get your mind out of the gutter. One particularly useful aspect of Minitel to these Pepe Le PewDiePies was that the billing was completely inclusive and non-itemized. You just got a bill each month from PTT for the total cost of your Minitel usage, anything from a train ticket to minutes in a chat room, but the bill didn't list what the charges were for. It was just a total number. This led to a ton of people using the Minitels at their offices to hang out in pink rooms trying to seduce some voluptuous username because their office wouldn't be able to figure out where the charges were coming from. Which was just fine for the French government, seeing as PTT took a cut of all money made through Minitel. In 1997, PTT brought in 6 billion francs for Minitel charges. To put that in perspective, today, 6 billion francs could buy you nothing. At its peak in the late 90s, Minitel had around 25 million users, just under half the French population. So predictably, France decided to trot out some old-fashioned colonialism by using computer terminals instead of disease blankets. They launched versions of Minitel across the world, including in the US, where they named it 101 Online. But you may be noticing that you're watching this video not on an adorable Minitel terminal using a Minitel network, but on an extremely cracked iPhone using your neighbor's internet connection. Why? Well, many attribute Minitel's ultimate failure to it being a highly centralized system where any new service had to be registered with and approved by PTT. The government middleman led to weird bureaucratic inefficiencies, like how, as a result of lobbying, French newspapers had priority for setting up Minitel services, meaning that some companies had to create fake newspapers just so they could make Minitel services. When the World Wide Web reached widespread adoption, with its hip, bad boy, decentralized structure, the highly centralized Minitel began to be about as popular as an escargot without any sacre bleu. 
What's surprising though isn't that Minitel failed, it's how long it succeeded. Developed in 1978, Minitel still had 10 million monthly connections in 2009, and it wasn't disconnected until 2012, impressively outliving other 1970s innovations like VHS, floppy disks, and the solo career of John Lennon. You know what else survived long past when skeptics thought it would? Nebula, a streaming service started by me and my other educationalist creator friends. Nebula is home not only to ad-free versions of our YouTube content and early releases of our Jet Like the Game episodes, but also to tons of incredible exclusive originals like the live-action travel competition Half as Interesting's Crime Spree, the HI Brick Special, Wendover Documentaries, and exclusives from other channels you probably watch. Real Life Lore has a whole Modern Conflict series, Real Engineering has the Battle of Britain, and there are tons more. The best way to get access to Nebula is through the Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle, which also gives you access to Curiosity Stream, the documentary streaming site home to my documentary, The Colorado Problem, A River in the Red. You can get access to both sites for the crazy low price of only $14.79 for the whole year by going to curiositystream.com/hai.